Hello everybody, Konodger here. Welcome to build 1194 of Automation, the car company tycoon game. This is a rather important update as the, uh, the ability to put motors into cars has been implemented in the game. That is very important on the progress of the game. It's, it's kind of one of the last large core elements uh, towards progressing to a complete product. Uh, not that we are, I would say, uh, right around the corner of the game being done, but it's just a huge milestone. Uh, so without further ado, let's go into the sandbox. And you see that the, uh, the car manager here has changed quite a bit. I have personally not built any cars yet. I have not done anything beyond what I did in the last episode of the engine recreation series. Uh, we see the, luckily all the engines are still there. Uh, if you don't know, I do a little mini-series where I'm, I kind of go through a history lesson of, of motors in certain eras. Currently we're working on uh, some American muscle car motors. Uh, but that is not what we're here for today. Today we are going to start a new Let's see, do we start a new model or do we start a new platform? Let's see what new model will give us. That will give us nothing, so let's start a new platform. Alrighty, so we are in the car design studio and we can just choose the basic stuff here for the monocoque and the, the material. All of this stuff is what still needs to be worked on. You know, the, the core elements are here now they have to start working on options and stuff like that, uh, especially for things such as suspension, braking, wheels, the list goes on and on. Um, but what we can choose is either a front transverse or front longitudinal. That would mean front wheel drive or rear wheel drive, basically. Uh, you can see cabin space. It's already calculated out here. If you have a front wheel drive based car, you get lots of cabin space and very good cooling dynamics. Uh, if you go down to a rear-wheel drive longitudinal layout, uh, you only get high and high, so it's still good. I myself am a huge rear-wheel drive car person, fan, lover, owner, all of that good business, so I am going to go with a longitudinal setup. Uh, we can only choose McPherson Strut for now. That's fine. Double wishbone in the back and steel as the panel material. Now we can go to the body shell and see we got a plethora of new body shells to choose from. Um, let's see safety and I'm not sure what that means. I'm thinking it probably means uh, the environmental resistance to corrosion and stuff like that since our chassis material is steel and the panel material steel, that would make sense. It's gonna rust like crazy. Again, something I'm super familiar with. I'm a big fan of 90s Japanese cars, which are essentially rust just trying to form. Uh, let's see here. Got some new body shapes. I believe this one we've messed with before. And this one. All these other ones are new. We've got a sedan. Uh, kind of a hatchback. Look there. Uh, a couple more three doors, different different sh basic shapes that you can make your own shape out of, and they have their own unique uh, wheelbase and width and stuff like that. Um, I kind of like in the looks of this. We'll make ourselves a a car I always wish existed was a three door hatchback like a CRX, but something that was rear wheel drive. I thought that would be really cool. Let me see, it's really light. Uh, engine bay volume, so it tells you how much volume there is to take up an engine bay. That's 20,000 cubic inches. That doesn't mean you can put a 20,000 cubic inch engine in there, it just means you have that much space to fill up. Alrighty, so before we put any body fixtures on here, uh, let's go ahead and move some of these body elements, some of the sheet metal around first. You can see, it's very simple. Just push it forward, push it up. I kind of want a pretty slanted nose, maybe not quite as much protrusion on the bumper there. So pretty flat nose. Uh, I'd like this to stick out pretty straight though. Do 
a little bit more fender flare, not too much. Uh, windshield a little bit more straight up, give you that headroom. Uh, this part looks like we can just scoot forward and back, and this up and down. Not a whole lot. Alright, so that's a little funky looking there. Hmm. Yeah, that's that's acceptable there. It's a little a little bit funky in that it goes back down. But I can deal with that. Alright, in the back can we push it out a little bit? Yeah. Get that cool little rear lip thing going on there. Alright. That's enough to mess around with that. Um yeah, that's really weird how it I wonder if it's part of this, no? No, oh, not really. Uh, still some massaging to do with these bodies. They're all very early in development, so uh, you might get some weird shapes like that as you're messing around with the sheet metal. But let's go ahead and put some fixtures on this thing. Uh, headlights. I'm not going to work in any kind of era. I'm just going to kind of burn through these and make it acceptable looking, hopefully. Uh, let's see. These have got a lot of angle to them. Oh, that's mean looking. <laughs> uh, not quite so much angle, I think. Let's see. Flatten them out a little. And make them a little shorter. I like that. That's nice and aggressive looking. Uh, let's do a grill. And now when we do grills, something new. As you'll see that it adds how much horsepower these fixtures could cool. So currently... 77.6. I would like a little bit more than that. Right, so let's increase the size of this one. Now we're up to 130. Um, a pretty big grill down there. So now we've got 138. Um, could we get one in the middle here? That would be nice. Let's see. That one might look okay. Pretty short though. That would match the headlights a little better. Yeah, that looks acceptable. And then if we make a sportier model, we could add vents over here to get more cooling. But as of now, we can handle 206 horsepower, and that is plenty for what I have in mind here. I'm um, just going for the base model car. Uh, how about anything else on the front? I'll throw a badge on there. We got some new badges. About mm, on the hood, yeah. Small. That's good. And then, uh, don't think we need indicators. We got blinkers in the headlights. Lips. I don't think we need to go and put a lip on this one. Again, we're working with a base model car, so no need there. So let's put a door handle. We got a bunch more door handles to choose from now. Um, let's go with some Miata-esque door handles. It's a nice simple design. Maybe a little larger. Right there. Alright, and what else do we need? Obviously need some taillights. Uh, not too much more selection here. Maybe these look new. Uh, I'm not sure how they're going to work with this flat back. Yeah, those look funky. Funky, funky. How about... How about... Oh, decisions, decisions. What about these? Yeah, those look like they were made for this car. Um, let's go... Let's go a little weird. Put them up further on the body. So that looks good there. Uh, is there any... Maybe we could include some other designs. Maybe some like reflectors on the bottom here. Real small reflectors. Give it a little bit more detail. Yeah, that looks good. Uh, tailpipes. Exhaust. Just gonna go with a single exhaust. Which we can choose there. And how about on the left side? Yeah, that looks good. Alright, anything else that we need? No? I think that will do it for a base model run-of-the-mill car. Now what we need is to save this platform. 
let's just save it as test car one. All right. So now if we go back, we have a new platform. You can see it will save it, and you can use that in uh, in the future and revise it, and revise it, and make different models based off of that. But for now, what we want to do is to make a new model. So we're going to use this platform. We have the choice here to do rear wheel drive or four wheel drive. We can do rear wheel drive on this one. And then we can choose an engine. And you can see I've got my huge list of engines here uh, from the uh, many recreations we did. I believe it is showing us that this red one here will not fit in this car. Uh, so we've got a lot to choose from. What do we want? I'm thinking some kind of high strung four cylinder and a hmm Honda. Honda had some good high strongs. But what about that Toyota? You like the silver top? Yeah, it would be 149 horsepower at 7300 and 127 foot pounds. I think that's a good one to choose. Uh, you can create a new engine from here, so if you don't have an engine already lined up. You can go ahead and create it at this point. But in this case, we're going to choose the 4AGE silver top. All right, so there's our there's our uh, horsepower chart. Just a pretty simple, basic uh, look at it. Not the, the more complicated one you would get in the engine manager. Give it you your basic stats. All right, we can choose that we want a manual gearbox with just a single standard clutch. No, uh, no dual clutch. Shenanigans here. I think this is going to be a five speed car. And that brings up this estimated top speed and the chart of the gear spacing per RPM. Uh, we have a rev limit at uh, 70, I think 7,500 on this. So you can see that it's showing you its peak power band here. So these would be your shift points. So now, first to second would push you down below where your peak horsepower is. Um, if we were to increase the spacing, you can see you can get it closer. But then your first gear is so tall that it's going to be difficult to drive. Um, we'll go with a 125 top speed. And a little bit of a tall first gear so that the second gear doesn't bog down too much. Uh, then you got the choices at differentials, currently just standard open diff. Alright, and then we can move on to the uh, rims and tires. And this will affect tests later on, but as our base model car here, we're probably just going to go with a 185-55 R15. Uh, you can see that it does now scale, so you can put huge wheels on your car. That would require big fender flares. We certainly don't have that just yet. We well, just have short fenders with pretty sunken wheels, a little wide in the back. Uh, but that's okay. And then we can jump uh, past all the coming soons to testing. Um, that is going to show you the top speed acceleration. I am. Uh, I live in the states, so I have it set to uh, miles per hour. So it shows you the 0 to 62. Uh, we're a little bit more familiar with 0 to 60 here, but it's 0 to 100 kilometers an hour, which is 62 miles an hour. Uh, so we're getting an 8.4 0 to 60. That's that's pretty good. That's average, you know, uh, 90s rural drive two-seater. Um, quarter mile time, 16.3. Not, not spectacular there. Uh, weight distribution. 56.43, so that's going to be quite the drift car. Weight 22.94, so a super light car. Alright, so here you can see a little bit of information. It gives you the acceleration, uh, the power over time, and the uh, the tires, which I believe I believe is representing how how many G's you're pulling, something like that. Or maybe that's how the red is. Uh, so you can see how it how it pulls till it hits its speed limit. Uh, this shows you the power through the gears, shows you how well you're staying in your power band. So you can see, like I said, when you go into second gear, you're dropping down to about 90 horsepower. 
Uh, but from there on, it's staying above 100. Uh, the weight transfer. See, as the car is accelerating, it's going to pull that weight backwards. So that means when you are first initially getting on the gas, you're going to go above 50, which is good because that means you get some traction in the back. And uh, that is about it. So now let's take a look at how well it's graphically handled. That is awesome. You can remove the fixtures, you can remove the body altogether. And you can see it has put our motor and the drive shaft and all of that good stuff into our chassis. And it all fits in clearances. Now this is a very small motor for a pretty big car. And that is because maybe in a different model, um, maybe in a different model we want something a little bit fancier. So let's go ahead and save this, but make a new model on that same chassis. Choose an engine. Oops, we're gonna go door drive again. Then choose an engine. And maybe in this one we go crazy. And let's see. How crazy should we get? How about? Oh well, heck! Everybody puts them in everything, so let's put an LS1 in it. There we go. Choose engine. So oddly enough, it fits because it's got a pretty good nose to it. Oh, it's probably gonna be a little tighter squeeze. So let's go manual, single clutch. We'll put a T5-6 six, six speed in there. Uh, spacing is okay, but we need to increase that top speed to say 150. Or 149, close enough. Um, we're still staying relatively good in our power band for sure. Um, let's see. Standard open diff, rims and tires. Now we're going to need some wider tires, uh, but with our body we're kind of limited. So even those 16s are kind of poking out a little bit. Uh, so we'd have to go in and change this body up a little bit uh, for a, a model like this, but I think it's a little unrealistic to think a factory car would come with an LS1 in this shape. That would be really cool. So now if we go to testing, we're going to see some issues. Because we only have enough cooling for 206 horsepower. And we got a lot more than that in there. So, let's see. We are not making b b about 300 horsepower. And I think if we look at a quarter mile, it's not very good. The 0 to 60 is not very good. Weight distribution is terrible. <laughs> 61.38. And our weight came up to 2,700 pounds. Uh, you can see we're we're dealing with a lot of tire slip, not much G's because it's just constantly slipping, and overall just poor performing. So basically, what that shows is you can put a huge motor in this car, but the car grip-wise, cooling-wise, and whatnot couldn't actually handle it. So if we go back, we can change this platform. Guys, now let's see. We can put a little bit more. Uh, we can't adjust the body shell because we've already put fixtures on there. What we can do is put some more grill on it. So we put some, let's see. Let's put a hood scoop on it. That will give us a little bit more horsepower potential. And uh, let's put more, uh, let's see, what am I looking for? Vents. There we go. Some big side vents on there. That brings us up to about 292. I want to modify this guy, make it a little bigger. 310. Modify this one, make it bigger. And 319. All right. Now, if we go back and save, oops, save this as test car two. Save. make a new model based on that one. Go over to drive again. We'll select that same LS1. This one. Let's wait down there, wouldn't it? There it is. Choose. We should have some better results. Six speeds. Top speed 150. We'll put the 17s on there. As ridiculous as it looks. But a 225 was a, a lot better sized 
to get some power to the ground. Uh, testing. Let's see, we dropped down to a 14.5 quarter mile, 6.9 0 to 60. And uh, overall, a much better top speed. And you can see it's finally making a little bit of grip and power, but not, not too terribly much. Our weight transfer is never going above 50, so it's just constantly spinning tires. Uh, if we go back and maybe current engine choice will be removed, yes. Go to a four-wheel drive setup. This is going to limit our options on engines, which I believe the LS1 will still fit because it's pretty short. So we can still choose that engine to... Nope, it is too big, so... Let's see here. What high horsepower, smaller motor do we have? We have... Uh, the VH45 is a V8, and it has a shorter engine, but I'm not sure on the size of that one either. Nope, too big. Um, let's see... Let's just go with a Blacktop SR20. That will fit. Makes 220 horsepower, so not nearly as much as that LS motor, but even though it has so much less power, it has the ability to uh, fit in there, and it should grip with the four-wheel drive. So let's see. Let's bring that spacing down. Down to 100. And, I don't know, 140 miles an hour, maybe. That might be stretching it. We'll see. Uh, the rims and tires. We'll keep those 17s, but now, now grip into all four. And you can see, yes, indeed, we have decreased our 0 to 60 to 5.3 seconds and our quarter mile to 13.6, about the same miles an hour. The weight transfer is now about ideal. Uh, we're getting over 50 and then just below 50 after that. Get not making nearly as much power, but way more grip. So, uh, as you can see, that's why you wouldn't necessarily want a huge Hawken V8 inside of a little two-door hot hatch, per se. Alrighty, so that kind of shows off what we have now available in the car manager. With the new platform and model system, you can combine engines and chassis, and uh, gets us one step closer to being able to create your own automotive empire, which is the end goal here. That is... That is the core of this game. It is tycoon-based, so everything they're working for, although it seems very technical and very just sim-based, uh, this is all just tools to help build the tycoon atmosphere of the game. So eventually all of this stuff will come together, and uh, there will be, say, a campaign or whatnot to play through. So there's still a long way to go, but uh, it's getting, getting closer. And this is a huge step towards that. So, if you haven't checked out the game, I highly encourage you to do so. Don't be scared by the uh, the technical side of it. It's not as hard to understand as maybe it looks just watching a video on it. There's very good tutorials available and everything. Say if you wanted to just do these tutorials, or say you just went into the sandbox and made an engine or whatever. Everything will have a tutorial to go with it. So it's oh, it's okay if you don't know a whole lot about the technical aspect of cars. Uh, there is enough here to guide you along and figure it out and you will probably learn a whole lot. So I think that's going to do it for today. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.